In the straits between the islands of Java and Sumatra lies a serial killer. Here, where the crust of the earth is weak, violent forces below have erupted time and time again, leaving death and destruction in their wake. A century and a half ago, it erupted with such violence that it may have been the loudest sound ever heard. It is a volcano with a name that has become infamous. It is Krakatoa. Indonesia is a giant archipelago consisting of large, well-known islands and thousands of smaller ones. Situated at the boundary between two tectonic plates, it is a part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, with the country home to 130 active volcanoes, more than any other nation. The majority of these are on the large islands of Sumatra and Java, since these lie directly atop the subduction zone where the Australian plate is being pushed below the Sunder plate. Plate tectonic subduction is responsible for the majority of the world's volcanoes, as the trapped water within the buried plate leads to softening and lightening of the rock, resulting in it moving to the surface as magma and ultimately erupting in the form of volcanoes. The Sunder Strait between these two islands is where we find our killer, Krakatoa. Due to the historical violence of this area, the geography of our perpetrator today is only a snapshot of an ever-changing scene. Essentially, the location is occupied by a large stratovolcano, meaning a steep-sided volcano composed of multiple layers or strata of ash, lava, etc. This volcano at present is broken into four islands, and together these form a giant caldera. A caldera is a sunken piece of the Earth's crust, where once a magma chamber existed beneath a volcano, but eruptions have drained it of its volume, resulting in the central part of the crust above collapsing, but leaving the edges intact. The word Krakatoa is but one of many assigned to this area, with alternate spellings and so on, being the result of the multiple languages of the European colonial powers in this area reaching different conclusions from the local dialect. Krakatau is now regarded as the correct form, but since Krakatoa is the most familiar to us, I'll continue to use that name. This area has erupted regularly throughout history, with various sources hinting at eruptions as early as 416 AD, and continuing every century or so until more reliable accounts were recorded with the arrival of European colonial powers in the 1600s. In 1681, a number of Dutch travellers recorded devastation on the island there at the time, while passing through the Sunder Strait. A century later, in 1780, British Royal Navy vessels stopped on the island and reported habitation and lush vegetation once again. Another century on, however, and we come to the eruption of 1883, which has established this volcano as infamous geography beyond perhaps any save Vesuvius of Italy. In the years leading up to the eruption, seismic activity in the area had been increasing, but by May of 1883, steam was regularly being vented from one of the mountain's three cones, while ash was now regularly being hurled into the atmosphere, blanketing the surrounding region. Earth tremors were regular, being felt as far as Batavia, modern-day Jakarta, 160 kilometers away. On the 25th of August, the eruptions dramatically intensified, and by 2 p.m. on the 26th, a large black ash cloud had risen 27 kilometers high, and regular explosions were being heard every few minutes. Pumice as large as 10 centimeters across was landing on the many ships that used the strait to pass through, 
A small tsunami was experienced on the surrounding shores around 8 p.m. that evening. The morning of 27th of August was the time of infamy for Krakatoa, however. On that morning, four enormous explosions occurred. These were timed at 5.30, 6.44, 10.02, and 10.41. Each had their own accompanying consequences of violence, but the atmospheric pressure waves from the suddenness and scale of the detonations alone puts this eruption into the record books. The third of these explosions is believed to be the loudest sound heard in historic times. It was heard across 10% of the surface of the Earth, most notably recorded in Perth, Western Australia, over 3,000 kilometres to the south, and all the way across the Indian Ocean, on the island of Rodriguez near Mauritius, 4,800 kilometres distant, where the sound was mistaken for cannon fire from a nearby ship. The atmospheric pressure wave was recorded on devices on the other side of the world, in Europe and the United States. Closer to the eruption, and in Batavia, the sound was calculated to have been 180 decibels, equivalent to standing next to a rocket during launch. Sailors in the Sunda Strait within 64 kilometers had their eardrums ruptured, and anyone within 16 kilometers would have been permanently deafened. The sound at the centre of the detonation itself has been calculated to have been an unimaginable 310 decibels. Bear in mind that anything above 100 decibels is considered a loud sound, and consider also that the decibel scale is logarithmic. So the sound energy at the centre of the eruption would have been 100 billion billion times greater than being next to a chainsaw in operation. Such figures are perhaps not surprising when, looked at another way, the energy released in these detonations has been estimated to be an equivalent of 200 megatons of TNT, four times greater than the Soviet Tsar bomber, the largest ever thermonuclear bomb explosion. The eruptions of that day ejected about 25 cubic kilometers of rock, blowing the mountain apart. Thrust into the air, to the edge of space at 80 kilometers in altitude as a plume of ash, rocks and hot gas, the heavier fractions of this superheated column then sank back down to the earth and sea as a pyroclastic flow, reaching as far as the village of Ketimbang, some 64 kilometers distant, killing hundreds there. Closer to the eruption, the island of Sabisi and its 3,000 inhabitants were covered in the flow with no survivors. But most significantly, the force of this collapsing column of hot gas, ash and rock, on hitting the ocean, displaced several cubic kilometers of water there, resulting in a massive series of tsunami. The tsunami that destroyed the town of Merak, 70 kilometers distant, was estimated to have been at least 40 meters high. It was these tsunami that were the most significant in terms of loss of life. The official death toll by the Dutch authorities for the eruption was 36,417, with possibly as many as 34,000 of those caused by the tsunami. Some estimates, however, put the overall death toll as high as 120,000. But the official toll ranks the Krakatoa eruption as the second deadliest in recorded history. But it wasn't just the immediate locality or region that was affected. With so much ash and sulfur dioxide ejected into the atmosphere, global temperatures were cooled by as much as 0.4 Celsius over the following year, in addition to dramatic sunsets in Europe and America recorded by the numerous artists of the day. So, all very apocalyptic, and although Krakatoa is probably the most well-known eruption of recent times, it pales into insignificance in comparison to other eruptions of the historical and geological period in that same region. Since the 1980s, volcanologists have measured the violence of an eruption using the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI. Because natural phenomena occur across orders of magnitude in scale, and in the same fashion of the Richter scale measuring the violence of an earthquake, VEI is logarithmic, meaning that a VEI-7 eruption is 10 times more violent than a VEI-6, 100 times more violent than a VEI-5, and so on. 
What determines violence in this context is a composite of several measurable factors, including total volume of ejected material and cloud column height. Since the vast majority of eruptions are in the geological and historical record, these parameters are often estimated and so VEI can be subjective and should only be used as a quick comparative assessment. So where did the Krakatoa eruption of 1883 rate on the VEI? Well, it's a 6, which is classed as colossal, and is the same as the Mount Pinatubo eruption in the Philippines in 1991, but an order of magnitude more violent than the VEI-5 eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980 and Vesuvius of 79 AD, which were merely cataclysmic. And yet Krakatoa is not the largest eruption to have been recorded. Earlier that century, and a few hundred miles east, within the same archipelago, another volcano exploded, but this time at a VI of 7, an order of magnitude more powerful. This was Mount Tambora, and its super colossal 1815 eruption, ejecting 40 cubic kilometers of rock, is the largest in recorded history, and probably the largest of the last 10,000 years. This eruption killed 70 to 100,000 people directly, and dramatically affected Earth's climate over the years following, including the year without summer in Europe of 1816 that led to crop failures, disease, and possibly hundreds of thousands of deaths on that continent alone. A few hundred miles west of Krakatoa, however, and we find evidence of an even larger eruption, the VEI-8 megacolossal eruption of Toba about 74,000 years ago. This eruption was so violent that it has been proposed that it almost wiped out the human race at that time, with evidence of a bottleneck in the gene pool of humans through the study of mitochondrial DNA around that time. So the archipelago of Indonesia is undoubtedly the most infamous in terms of volcanism throughout recent history, but beyond the tragedy, one should note that there is a positive side to all this seismic activity. It is no accident that Java has such a staggering population for its size. 147 million people on an island just a thousand kilometers east-west, and 150 north-south. Home to so many volcanoes, Java's soil is enriched through deposits of mineral-rich ash that has acted as natural fertilizer in the thousands of years that humans have lived here. And so, where such volcanoes at times toll such great human tragedy, they also bring life. But going back to Krakatoa, was that the end of the story? Actually, no. Although the island itself was blown apart, and the emptied magma chamber led to the collapsed caldera of four different islands that we see today. A new island has emerged at the center of the old volcano. Known as Anak Krakatoa, or Son of Krakatoa, this island had grown to as much as 338 meters in height since its emergence in 1927, until it erupted in 2018, leading to a major collapse of its cone that triggered a tsunami resulting in 437 deaths and thousands injured. At the time of this video, the island is undergoing yet another eruption, and so the cycle continues, as it will, perhaps for millions of years to come. The island will grow again, and perhaps in two or three centuries from now, we will see yet another cataclysm unfold in the ongoing story of Krakatoa. And that's it for this video. Please like and share if you enjoyed it or found it useful, and please let me know your thoughts in the comments, especially if you have traveled to this region or lived there, and if I have missed out anything that you feel is important. If you haven't done so already, then please click the subscribe button so you don't miss future episodes. You can also support future development of this channel by becoming a Patreon supporter for as little as $2 a month. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.